Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe so you can catch the new spills every week. And don't forget to hit the bell up top so you can join the notification squad. Alright, so in this one I want to talk about Iron Man's plastic ghost armor. And out of all of the different Iron Man armors that we talk about, this one doesn't make a whole lot of different appearances, but it's definitely one of his most advanced and one of my personal favorites too. And I also like that they're not shy about explaining how it works. Because I feel like it's real easy for a rider to be like, well, oh, well, it's just technologically technology. You know what I'm saying? And just leave us with a simple idea of, OK, he's Iron Man. He just makes this stuff. You just got to believe that he made it. And this is what it does. But this arm is one that appears under the helm of a number of writers like Christopher Priest, Greg Morrow, Jeff Johns, just to name a few. And I like that they don't give a lazy presentation, but rather throughout the course of the story, they break down the science of how it works and how this suit was designed to take down Black Panther. And for you guys that's been rocking with me for a while, you already know that I like when they give the extra details and make it more believable. And it's like sometimes mystery is good and suspense is good, but when it comes to science and comics, man, I'm just like, break it down, break it down. And that's just because I like all the extra details like that. But just before we get to dissecting this armor and talking about how it works, I wanted to talk a little bit about how it came to the point of him even making this armor. Because in a previous video, we talked about when Tony Stark invaded Wakanda. And in doing this, he went full force like Megazord style, only to make it to the outskirts of Wakanda to be met by Black Panther's huge Mega Panther Zord. You know, we just really need to go on Twitter and settle like a final name for, uh, for the Black Panther Zord thing. I don't know, we'll probably do like a Twitter poll or something like that. But the main reason I bring this up is because that event that we discussed in that previous video came about in a similar way to the way this one did. But not only do they have similar causes to why they happen, but they also occur like a pattern is being formed of some sort. Because that Megazord battle, and I'm just saying that for lack of a better name, but that took place in the 2008 issue of Black Panther, Black to the Future. And it's kind of crazy because exactly 10 years before that, in 1998, is when we got the premiere of the Plastic Ghost Armor. And this coincidence makes it very much feel like we're due for another matchup in 2018. And I don't know about you guys, but I wouldn't mind seeing the Plastic Ghost Armor pop up in the MCU come 2018. And not even necessarily to see him fight T'Challa with it, but even for us just to see it and have him like, you know, I was thinking about it. Nah, I forget that. I want to see them fight. But of course, who doesn't, right? But these other two appearances I mentioned so far, they've come about for the same reason, like I said. And that reason is the Brass Frogs of Solomon. Now, I won't go too deep into their explanation because I did that in the last video. Well, not literally the last video, but the last video where we discussed Iron Man versus Black Panther. But as a real quick refresher, these frogs are historical artifacts that originate from Wakanda. And for the most part, they're really unpredictable. They operate like with a mind of their own. And sometimes they'll just peep into the future, like in the other video with Iron Man versus Black Panther. But they're also capable of travel, physical travel between different timelines. And like I said, I talk more about the abilities of the Brass Frogs in the other video, but I never really get into the history of them. And in this storyline where we see the plastic ghost armor, the history of these frogs also play a significant part to the reason why Tony and T'Challa are going against one another. Because in Wakandan history, these frogs have been said to have been used to travel into the future and bring back warriors to fight with Wakanda. And not just the future, but different points in time, future and past. And so when an organization by the name of XCON got a hold of these frogs and altered their advanced mechanisms in order to specifically pinpoint who they want to bring through time. And because keep in mind, these frogs also have a mind of their own and they're also known to disappear and reappear in whatever time or reality they see fit. And so really it was their way of harnessing the power of these frogs just to make it do what they needed it to do. And I mainly wanted to explain that just so other pieces of the story make sense. I didn't want to dive too deep into it because it does get a little confusing with the extra versions of the same characters. But I did want to introduce you guys to the idea of these frogs because they're the reason why we have two Black Panthers and two Tony Starks. And what happens here is we have our future version of Black Panther going up against our future version of Tony Stark. And the future version of T'Challa was mainly playing a lot of this low key, being real dodgy with Iron Man, which only made him more suspicious and motivated him to investigate even further, like what was really going on. And a lot of the reason why T'Challa didn't just fill him in and tell him what the issue was, it was because X-Con actually used this time displacement on Tony. And because of that, Black Panther didn't know if he could trust him or not. And so when Panther makes his way to stop this ex-con organization from swapping the presidents out, they gas Tony to keep him out of the way. But then that's when we see the Tony that ex-con is sent and he goes into the vault where he keeps his suits, noticing that T'Challa had broken in there already. But because he's seen that, he makes plans to modify one of the suits to go after T'Challa. And that's pretty much all the backstory to how we got our Iron Man plastic ghost armor. Alright, so this armor is essentially Model 7 Mark III. 
in the near future Tony added these modifications to it just so he would have the upper hand against Black Panther. And he didn't want the T'Challa who was just in the vault being prepared for what was coming at him. And he also made these changes because around this time Tony and T'Challa were sharing a few notes on different designs for like Quinn Jets and a few smaller weapons as well. And that's because they had a joint company called Wakanda Design Group which they shared 49, 51 percentage wise uh, with T'Challa at 51 percent. But the design of this armor puts a heavy focus on stealth attack. And in order to focus the functionality more on stealth, Tony actually had to dial back a lot of the weaponry in the suit. And Tony says that his main reason for doing this is so he can sneak up on Black Panther with the expectation that the fight won't be that long. And that's really what he's counting on for this to work out. Because with his other suits, how he has like his repulsor blast, this suit can only let off three of those. That's it. And that's because his plastic ghost armor, which isn't literally made of plastic, but rather than plastic, it's an advanced composite of ceramics. And his choice for creating that compound is kind of twofold. The first reason is because he needs it to be highly reflective. And that's because the projections are coming from the pink part of the armor, which we'll get to in a minute. And that's mainly because he needed something that was highly reflective, yet undetectable. And with that, it's obvious that if you went with any of the typical metals that he used for any of his other suits, it would mainly defeat the purpose because his highly advanced stealth armor would be able to be picked up by a metal detector, which would completely defeat the purpose of going stealth. And as far as the pink part all around his suit, those are carbon-based hologram generators. And they're also fine-tuned to the bandwidth of T'Challa's night vision. And the way those work, they take the images of Tony's surroundings and they project them onto the highly reflective surface of the armor. And remember, this is all made possible from them working together and the information that T'Challa handed over for the studies of their company. But continuing in Black Panther Volume 2, Issue 45, they go on to explain that this suit includes bioneural circuitry. And what that is is a technology that's incorporated by bioneural gel packs. And by using that, it minimized a lot of the wires that would have been in the suit and also helped to make it a lot quieter. But the next feature is what made this suit nearly completely quiet. And that was the active noise reduction engine. So now the active noise reduction engine ran off of CO2, which was a brilliant idea because we exhale carbon dioxide. And this essentially gave the suit a limitless supply of noise reduction or a fuel for the noise reduction system. But this is also where T'Challa found a weakness. And that's because he knew Tony exhaling alone wasn't enough CO2 by itself to carry out this task. So he figured that he would get the suit wet so he could find the vents in the suit and hopefully break the containers open releasing the CO2 gas and also causing the plasma to discharge through the vents. And initially when Black Panther broke the pipes, Tony thought he was just doing it to get him wet and see where he was at, when in reality he was looking for a weak spot so he can tear their armor apart. But also what I want to do here is jump back to a previous issue to where T'Challa also got help from the other Black Panther. And it was that Black Panther who gave him a glove and a bottle of house cleaner and pretty much told him that this is what you're going to need to go up against Tony when he comes up against you in this future modified suit. And just so you know, this T'Challa that's going up against Tony, he's soon to have like a brain aneurysm. And they say it's for reasons unknown, but I'm pretty sure it has something to do with a few issues back where Iron Fist punched him in the head. But for whatever reason, they're not trying to tend to that right now. They got other stuff they need to do. Because clearly you want to send this dude with a concussion into a fist fight with Iron Man. Makes sense. But these tools that he gave himself are also what he used to get the upper hand in the fight. And that's mainly because a spray bottle that had Dr. Clean in it, which uses a whole lot of ammonia like a number of other house cleaners do. But that helped him in order to damage the glass like finish on the armor. So whenever it tried to project, there would be spots here and there. And that way, before his fuel was completely depleted, if he did try to go stealth, he wouldn't be able to go 100% invisible. But the main problem for T'Challa was the clock is ticking. And at this point in the fight, taking all these hits is just making a bad situation worse as far as his existing concussion. And also, before I forget to mention, Tony Su also included adaptive logic combat guidance processors. And really, that's the only thing that allowed him to land so many hits on T'Challa. Because if you guys saw Civil War back in 2016, they actually took that technology from the comics that showed up 18 years before that. And so with the adaptive logic combat guidance processors, all he had to do was just watch somebody's moves and the system would take over from there so he could counter. But what we find out here is that T'Challa took an extra device from the vault, one of Tony's own weapons, to use against him. And this device he placed on his back is called a negator pack. And it kind of works like the ultimate nullifier, so to speak. Because it's a device that Iron Man used to melt down existing Star Tech or immobilize the armor. And the crazy thing is, like with all the technology in Iron Man's suit, and with it being so counterintuitive to fighting styles, that may come in handy with hand-to-hand -hand combat, but there's really no answer to imagination. 
And so while Tony's strong suit, no pun intended, is with creating these Iron Man suits and creating new technology, that still pales in comparison when you try to go up against the Black Panther, one of the greatest fighters in the Marvel Universe. And even when Tony mentions that the plastic ghost armor has enough power to bring Thor to his knees, still, it's like you gotta realize that you don't just win a fight because you're the strongest or you're the fastest. But the battle is really won by whoever comes up with a solution first. But either way, both T'Challa and Iron Man are both saved by the alternate versions of themselves that come in. But that'll do it for this one, guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And now, ceramic may not be one of the hardest substances to make an armor out of, but at least Tony was smart enough to make it shock to the touch, so T'Challa wouldn't just tear it apart on sight. But let me know what you guys think. Personally, I think this was a great, great design of armor. Just bad execution. And from how it reads, it's like that's mainly because he was pissed while he's using it, so his judgment was a little bit off. So, still at the end of the day, a win's a win. But I got other links up here so you guys can check out my other videos. And as a matter of fact, I got a Deadpool versus Black Panther video where the guy that hired Deadpool in that video is the same guy that was the leader of XCON in this video. And I won't spoil it for you. You'll see once you check that out over there. But don't forget to hit that like button and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Alright, later.